In the last episode, we learned how to create objects inside JavaScript. And in this episode, we're going to learn how to create object constructors. So this is the example we had from the previous episode where I created an object called person. And inside the object, we have the name, the I call it, the age, and then a method that simply updates the age once I call on it. So one issue we have here is the fact that if I want to create more than one person, then I will need to go ahead and copy the object and paste it below here, then simply change the name from person one. And then the second one is going to be person two. And then we just need to change the information inside the second object. So this is not really a good way to do it because it creates a lot of code inside our JavaScript. So to fix this issue, we have something called object constructors, which is a way for us to create a object blueprint. And then we can create constructors, which are basically instances of that specific object. Now, that might all sound confusing. So I'm just going to go ahead and actually create it for you so you can see what I mean. So instead of having an object that has the information filled into it, like here you can see that the name is equal to Daniel, I call is equal to blue, we're going to create an object blueprint. What that means is that we're going to have an object that does not have information inside of it. Instead, we're going to have placeholders that we can then fill in later on using constructors. So I'm going to leave what we have here. And instead, I'm going to create a object that is going to be a blueprint. So in order to create an object blueprint, we're just going to create something that looks very similar to a name function, which we talked about plenty of times before. So I'm going to create a function. And then the name is going to be person just so it's the same as the previous example. And do notice that I use a capitalized P because objects always start with a capitalized letter when we name them. So it has to be a capitalized P parentheses curly brackets. And then inside this specific object here, like I said, we're not going to fill in information into it. Instead, we're going to go ahead and create placeholders. Now, when I refer to a property inside a object blueprint, like the one I have here, we use the keyword this, because when I want to refer to the object that I'm inside of, when I want to point to it, we use this as a keyword. So what I'm going to do here is I want to say we have this object punctuation. And then I want to give it the name of the property I want to create inside the object. So I want to say, for example, we have name as a property inside this object, then I'm going to set it equal to a variable called name, which is going to be the placeholder that we then later on use in order to pass in information into this object here. So what we need to do is we need to do it the exact same way as with a function, because in functions, when we want to pass in outside data, we do that using the parentheses up here. So we put in parameters that then get referred to inside the function, the exact same thing we're going to do here. So I'm going to say we have a name inside the parentheses that is going to be the property of this object here. Then what we can do is we can create the next property. So we can say we have this eye color. If I spell that correctly, there we go. And I'm going to set it equal to eye color, which is again is going to be a placeholder. So we need to fill it into the parentheses up here. In a lot of cases, I think it's easier just to sort of fill in everything inside the parentheses first and then create all the properties afterwards. But you can do whatever way you might think it's easier. Uh, then we're going to go and create the next one, which is going to be this age. That's going to be equal to a variable called age. And again, the same thing, we pass it into the parentheses up here. Like so. And of course, we can also create methods inside this object. So I'm going to say we have a this update age is going to be equal to an anonymous function parentheses curly brackets and we do need to put a semicolon at the end here because we want to close off all the statements in here with a semicolon and inside the method i'm just going to go ahead and return the same thing as we did with the previous example so i'm going to say return plus plus and then we're going to refer to this age so we add one to the age and return it inside uh, the method here. So now we have a blueprint we can actually use. And now we can just go ahead and create a constructor that is going to take this blueprint and create an object based on the blueprint. And the way we do that is very simple to do. So in the next line here, I'm going to go ahead and say we have a variable or a lit type variable, just going to go ahead and call them variables from now on because this does not make sense. Or could say we have a let. I'm not sure how you do that. So we have a let and I'm going to call it person one, I'm going to set it equal to a new 
type of object. Remember when we create a new object, we have to set it equal to new and then the name of the object. Because we created our own object up here that's going to be a blueprint, we need to refer to our own object that we call person with a capitalized P, if that makes sense. Parentheses and semicolon. So this might look very similar to the previous episode where I showed you that in order to create a new regular object that we create, it just said equal to new object with a capitalized O. So this is very similar to the previous episode. The only difference here is that we created this object that we're now referring to. So inside this constructor here, I want to pass in all the information we had inside the parentheses inside the object because now we need to fill in all the gaps that we included inside this object here. So the first one is going to be the name. So I'm going to say we have Daniel. The second information is going to be the eye color. So in my case, it's blue. And the third one is going to be the age, which is going to be 27. So now we have this object here that we can simply refer to or we have a constructor that is a instance of the object that we can simply refer to in order to get the information inside this uh, copy of the object we just created. So if I want to console log anything, I can say console.log parentheses, and then I can just refer to the object we created here or the instance of it called person 01. And then I can say punctuation and then access the properties and methods inside the object. So we can say I want to access the name and then we simply spit out the name inside the console. And the same thing if I want to access the method, I can simply say we have update age parentheses and then we access the method inside this object here. So it's a very simple process to create a object blueprint that we can create object constructors based off to create a bunch of instances of this specific object here. So when would you use this sort of thing inside a project? Because this might not be the best way to do it if you just need to have one object. But because in this case here, we want to create a blueprint for people and we might have up to like a hundred people, it might be a good idea to make it in this way. So we can just simply make a copy of the object. And if we want to create a second copy, we can just go ahead and paste it underneath here and then say we have a person number two and then create other information inside the constructor here. So we can say brown eyes and the age might be 43. And this is a much faster way to do it instead of creating many copies of a huge object over and over again. So this is the way you want to do it if you want to create many copies of a specific object like we just did in this example here. So this is how we create object constructors inside JavaScript. And in the next episode, we're going to create another project because I want you guys to understand how exactly we use constructors and just in general objects inside projects in JavaScript. So in the next episode, we're going to try and create a video game inside the browser using JavaScript. So I'm thinking something like an RPG where you can choose a character and then you can, you know, fight a monster or something and you know, you have attacks and that sort of thing. So uh, we're going to try and build something using JavaScript. And again, um, I'm trying to create something a little bit more complicated than what we did previously with the navigation, because I do think that uh, I also need to show you some more complicated examples, even though the next project is not going to be that complicated. I still think it's a really good exercise to try and build something like a video game. So you can sort of get the understanding of how we use JavaScript and how you know, the logic works when we try to build something using JavaScript. So uh, a video game is sort of a good exercise to do, I think. I hope it's not going to be too complicated. I hope you guys can follow it once we do actually get to the episode in the next one. Um, <laughs> but we're going to try and make a video game for it. So I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you next time.